Hello, this is Tom from Never Center. In this video, I'm going to show you the new features in Silo 2022.3. Um, and this one's all about primitives. So uh, from the create menu, um, the first one I'll show you is the gear slash wheel primitive. Uh, I'll pop open the options windows. Now this can be used for a lot more than just gears and wheels as I'll show you. Um, but if I create this, you'll see this is basically a wheel shape. I can control the inner radius and outer radius and um, obviously things like height or height sections um, and the number of sections around the radius. Uh, to make this into a gear, you'd use, you'd set the cog offset to something other than zero. So you can see this pops cogs out from that outer radius. And um, the cogs are, we use a, a, a method where we have a cog on stride and off stride, which basically means as I increase this, you can see that when the cog on stride is set to four, then four of these segments will be used for each cog. And um, the sections number here, that's not always going to be in, uh, evenly divisible by cog, cog on stride and cog off stride. So this will uh, sort of dynamically adjust um, the sections to work with whatever cogs you've got. So like I said, cog on stride determines how uh, many sections are in each cog and the off stride will determine how many sections are between each of those cogs. So um, and the last thing I'll show you with this is cog sharpness, which if I take it to one, that will turn it into a single point. Um, so you can see you can make stars with this, especially if I turn off cog stride and maybe take the inner radius to zero, then uh, you can do lots of interesting things with starbursts. Uh, let me do something like this. You can even make it flat. If you give it zero height, then it will have no... Uh, no height sections at all and use that for whatever you want. Um, so anyway, you can see how this could be useful for a lot of things. Um, let me set this back to zero. And um, even if you do, you can do some really interesting things by having a sort of a high cog off stride. Um, and I can make things like kind of a, maybe a neat little power or something um put this cog offset to something really low it just gives it a nice little out dent there anyway uh there's tons that you can do with this and just of note the uvs for these are really nice um, and automatically updated so you can see as i um, mess with this and like increase the cog offset that it updates those uvs nicely height sections things like that so um this will be an um, easy way to make these and you can have them textured and whatnot. So um, that's the gear slash wheel. And then the other place where we've put a lot of attention is in the sphere creation. So we've put this within the sphere options. So um, we didn't add separate spheres. We just made more options for the existing sphere. So previously, Silo just had the UV sphere, which is basically um, radius sections and height sections, and they come out from a point at the top and the bottom. And that's fine for many things, but there are cases where you'd want a different kind of topology on your sphere. So uh, for example, let me go to the quad sphere. And as I create this, you can see how this um, actually, let me put the UV sphere here for comparison. And then I'll create the quad sphere. So you can see the different topology, how this one has more evenly spaced polygons and it's all quads. And I can control the number of divisions, um, the radius. Uh, and the quad sphere is particularly useful if you're doing like box modeling and you want to start extruding things for like a head or an animal or something um, often it's great to start with something like that or that and you uh, basically turn on mirroring and just start pulling out faces um, but that can be very handy for that and um, also just with the uh, with the uv mapping on this um, it does it based on 
um, a cube uh, because this is basically derived from a cube that's subdivided. Each of the six faces of the cube is subdivided. And um, but if you want to like have spherical mapping on this, it's really easy to go into UVs materials, recreate UVs using spher spherical projection, and it will make a nice uh, spherical projection of that for you. All right, our third sphere type is the trisphere. And this is based on a shape called an icosahedron. So this is a 20 sided um, figure where all of the triangles are equilateral triangles. And um, so this, especially when I update the sub, up, increase the subdivisions, um, you can see that it makes a really nice smooth sphere where all of the tries are almost the same size. And I should note that they're not exactly the same size unless this is at uh, zero divisions. That's the only time when all the triangles are exactly equal. But um, what this is useful for is a lot of times uh, if you're you know making a game or something, you want a sphere that has sort of meets a very specific poly count. Um, and if I go to scene info, you can see this. And let me recreate this so you can see it as it changes. But I can um, up these divisions and watch my, my tries poly count. And um, you can find a really nice level where, uh, let me put it in smooth shade mode, just where it gives you basically the, 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 you know, the definition that you want along the edges. And it's uh, great for a very even, smooth sphere um, and so like this uv sphere it's got these very you know narrow triangles up here but then big poly square polygons down here and so it doesn't look as nice and consistent across all angles um, when you're rendering it as this tri sphere does um, and again it's uh it's got nice uv mapping set up for you uh, which is nice Another nice thing about this is that, um, so like say in Blender, for example, when you increase the divisions, it does it recursively. So two divisions ends up being way, way, way more polygons than one division. But this has a nice, um, better algorithm for subdividing this and controlling the, um, the density of this sphere than say in Blender. Um, and just a heads up, we've got another pretty neat triangle based sphere in development that has some really cool properties for making um, sort of capsule shapes and rounded cubes and whatnot. Um, that's not in this release, but it's upcoming. So that's something to look forward to. Um, and uh, so that's what we've got for this release for you. And um, if you have any ideas or feedback, come up to the help menu and go to click on send feedback. Let us know about other primitives you have ideas for or uh, any other features that you've been waiting for us. And I should also mention that there are several bug fixes in this release. Uh, we've addressed some crashing stuff and some unexpected behavior. So uh, there may well be something that you've found that uh, used to be broken in silo that is no longer broken. But let us know about anything that still is.